Hello, I'm Jean-François Plante, the Academic Advisor of the Business Intelligence Option for the MSC. Elan from the Career Management Service asked us to prepare those little videos answering questions that are frequently asked. We have multiple programs in my department, including business intelligence, as well as uh, data science and analytics. For that uh, later program, uh, Aurélie Lab is the academic advisor, and we shared the uh, making of the video. So you see me in English. She has done equivalent videos in French, and you may watch uh, either of them because the content is pretty much the same. We are academic advisors. You may ask questions about uh, course uh, selection of your courses, uh, the program itself. The more administrative questions are better asked to the um, other resources that Ellen mentions earlier in the videos. What is the difference between a supervised project and a thesis? Which one should I choose? There are two tracks in the program. You can choose between a supervised project or a thesis. The supervised project has nine credits. The thesis is 24 credits which means that when you choose a supervised project, you do a lot more courses. Both options are pretty good. Uh, it really depends on your preference. If you think you may be interested in doing a PhD later or staying in academia, then uh, doing a thesis would be well advised because you will be in uh, contact with research and what it means. So that is a good transition to start understanding if this is something for you. If you'd rather look for uh, work experience, more class, more coursework, more uh, things that you learn from the courses, then a uh, supervised project is better. So that really depends on what you want to do later. What is the difference between a supervised project and an internship? How is the topic of the supervised project validated? A supervised project can be a form of internship but it has to be on a project that is well-defined and that will allow you to show what you learn in your program. When you do a supervised project in an organization, you are an expert. You have to use what you've learned. You have to showcase what you've learned. An internship does not have that dimension where you have to come as an expert and um, use high-level knowledge like this. So that's the main difference. Now the topic of the supervised project is validated first by the supervisor, the professor that will supervise you, and then by the academic advisor. So I get to approve all of the supervised projects. This is what we're looking for in the topic. Is the student going to be using things that they learn in their program? And uh, is this a situation where they can bring something to the company that is we can reasonably think they will within uh, a reasonable number of hours. Is it possible to change the topic of my supervised project once it has started? The short answer is yes, but that shouldn't be your plan. So it is important to plan well and to have a topic that should stay the same. Now, um, complications happen. So if there is a problem, uh, the topic can change. It has still to be within the um, general topic of the program. It still has to be a good topic that can be um, supporting a supervised project. So what are the roles of uh, the professor and the supervisor in the organization where I do my project? How are they different? When students do their supervised project in an organization, when they are on site, it is typically the supervisor in the organization that will take care of the day-to-day -day supervision. Um, the uh, level of supervision of the professor really depends on how autonomous the student is and how well um, supervised they are in the industry. So sometimes the professor has a little role. Sometimes uh, we need to meet more often. Um, the role of the supervisor in the company will be to uh, really supervise the day-to-day, -day, like if the student was uh, a part of that organization. The role of the professor is to make sure that your project, your topic, can lead you to writing a good project. 
that uh, you will be able to show what you've learned in the program and that the scope is big enough but not too large. So we do supervise a lot of students and uh, that the most important part is really that. So make sure that uh, you keep in touch with your supervisor often enough so that they can keep you on track so that when you comes the time for redaction, for writing your project, you've done enough. You have a lot of nice things to talk about and uh, they may also help you identify which parts of your project you should really highlight in your redaction. What is the frequency of the meetings with the professor for a supervised project? So I kind of touched that a little bit in the previous question. It depends on the students. So uh, I had students that I had to meet every week because otherwise uh, th they needed that type of structure to really stay on top of things and work well. I had students that uh, got me to worry at some point because I hadn't had any news for a couple of months, but then when I was contacting them, uh, everything was all right. They had the good supervision and a good group. What they were doing was completely fine. So uh, there's a big range and the ideal is pro probably somewhere in between. So it's a matter of uh, basically setting up with your supervisor, your professor, um, the right frequency of meeting. It can be often if you need that. It can be much less often as you, if you're very autonomous. Of course, if there's any issues or problem, please contact your professor right away. So don't wait for things to uh, go wrong, whether it's uh, complications in the uh, workplace, uh, data being not available, or um, request to do a lot of little technical works that is not related to your thesis, you should make the professor aware of that uh, very often. Uh, this happens, but not so often. So most of the time students get um, a, a good project in a good setting. How should I proceed to choose the professor who will supervise my project? There is no big secret for that. You should contact professors. Uh, you may definitely start with professors that you know, that you had in your courses. And uh, so if you have a good connection, if you like the way that this professor was presenting, uh, just email him. Uh, in normal days, I'd say go see him, knock on his door. Um, I guess all the offices are still empty now. So uh, email will uh, should probably prevail now and uh, just talk to different professors. Uh, if there's a topic that you really like, then uh, try to get some information about who's working on those specific topics. We all have a list of specialties on our web pages, so you should definitely browse through our pages, uh, but then you can also talk to a couple of professors and uh, we, we are well aware of what others do in our department. Are the students evaluated by the supervisor in the organization as well as the professor? Um, the supervisor in an organization may um, evaluate their, uh, the students that work there. There's a form for that. Uh, it is not done systematically. Uh, it is done sometimes, uh, sometimes because the supervisor in the organization does it. Uh, sometimes before we ask for it. Uh, when I asked for it previously, it was in cases where uh, we thought the student did a pretty good job, but the, we felt the, supervi the, the project he wrote probably did not display well enough. And uh, we asked for the uh, supervisor in the organization to provide a, uh, not a grade, but a report of how it went. And that confirmed what we thought, that uh, the student had done better than what he was really showing us in his uh, written project. Um, in terms of uh, evaluating the projects, it's really the professor uh, that is uh, your supervisor as well as a reader. So somebody who will read your project, who is also typically a professor. Uh, we read the project, uh, we evaluate the complexity of it, how thorough it is, uh, how well it shows a good understanding of, the w of what you learned in the program, as well as other aspects such as uh, autonomy and so on. And uh, it's a literal grade that is given, so it's not a, a numerical grade, it's A+, plus, A, A-, minus, B+, plus, and so on. So uh, this is done by reading the project, then meeting and discussing it. Um, we have a good volume of projects, so uh, we, 
we get a good sense of how to it's it's not that hard to to grade them it's it's pretty clear given the numbers we read um Could you share three examples of supervised projects that you recently supervised? Of course, I can do that. Um, so let me tell you about uh, first the project of uh, Sophia, who was working with FP Innovation. So this was uh, my tax project, part of a, a bigger project. Uh, the general idea there was to um, make machines smart. So FP Innovation uh, works in uh, the wood industry. They are developing, they are doing research, they're developing uh, new things. And uh, they are exploring how they can use artificial intelligence to improve some machines, including a log turner. So this is in a sawmill, the first machine that will take a big log of wood and turn it in the right position so that you can saw as many planks as possible out of your log. So uh, we have data on millions of logs in that project, and uh, we had a really hard time predicting the error of rotation that the machine would do, and that was really the key, trying to predict the error so we could uh, reduce it. Now, uh, Sophia's project was looking at a, she was looking at a smaller set that was manually recorded when they looked at what the machine gave as a position, but also painted the line on each log and looked carefully to see what was the real rotation angle. And what she discovered is that uh, the machine has a big measurement error for the position of the log. So we were trying to predict the error that the machine would do, but in fact that measurement is uh, has so much error that there's as much error from the machine as there is uh, error from measuring the position of the log. So that was very important to know for them what to how to proceed next. And uh, one of the answers would be to improve on the ability of the machine to um, evaluate the position of the log. So that's for uh, Sophia. She did a really good job with her project. Um, then let me mention uh, the project of Antoine. Uh, who was at Statistics Canada. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but Statistics Canada is one of the best official statistics ag agencies in the world. Uh, we are well known in, in the world, uh, Canada, to be one of the best places for official statistics. Lots of research going on there as well. And for uh, at least three, four years now, if not more, uh, Statistics Canada has invested a lot of energy in using more artificial intelligence, more data science in um, the production of official statistics. So Antoine's um, job, Antoine's project at Statistics Canada was to evaluate uh, administrative sources of data and see their quality. Because uh, even if uh, there is data out there, uh, it's, it is still costly to go get it. So Antoine was specifically looking at uh, the evaluation uh, of houses in different cities and uh, trying to figure how many different formats there were, but then also how reliable the information was there uh, by um, digging into it, looking at other sources of data and so on. So really trying to evaluate how good the data, the administrative data was, uh, how expensive it would be to use it and so on. So very important project um, at StatsCan. Um, and then let me mention a project that is taking place uh, now. So uh, Christina, right now, she's working on sports analytics with me. Um, so she has found a couple of uh, data set where you have position of uh, soccer players on the field uh, during a game. And she will be analyzing those data to try to do some sports analytics. So we don't know the results yet. Uh, we have data and... Um, She's going to be uh, playing with that. Uh, there is a, a lot more as well. Um, you may look at any of the professor's web page. There's uh, typically a list of all the students we supervise. So often the title gives you already a, the title of the theses and projects to give you an idea of uh, what we've been up to, what our students have been up to. So if I do not choose a project with an external organization, how can I find an internal project at HEC Montreal? How should I choose a professor who will supervise me? 
pretty much all professors, they have uh, little ideas that they can give to you where you would be exploring a research question. So they may have data sets to provide to you. They may have ideas where you need to uh, run simulations, uh, do some coding, um, and otherwise. So the best way to find one is uh, just go talk to the professors. That's really the best way. Uh, mention what you like. Uh, go for professors that you you know uh, first. Uh, now, when when the projects are internal, um, often they may not be uh, paid. So in organizations, often they can be paid. There is uh, funding, for example, from MyTax and other places like this that will help companies because. It really gives a leverage. The company pays only a small share of your salary. They have uh, also, they may have uh, income tax benefits um, by hiring trainees and so on. Do you have recommendations about the redaction of the supervised project? Yes, definitely. Um, a few different things. One is uh, talk to your professor they should be able to help you identify what are the essential elements that you should highlight in your in the redaction of your project as you do your supervised project there may be a lot of things you do you may not need to describe them all in your final uh, report so you really need to highlight the parts that are important that show your understanding show that you uh, manage to use in real life the things that you learn in the program and your supervisor in the discussion should be able to help you point out uh, what are the things that should be highlighted. Um, then make sure that uh, your document is clear and that early on in each section, each paragraph in the introduction, you explain what am I doing, why am I doing that, uh, what was the problem, uh, and so on. So you need to uh, basically hold the reader by the hand a little bit. This would be true of many, many other documents. Make sure that early on in each paragraph, in each section, uh, in each chapter, you do mention what you're doing, why, what was the issue, and what's the solution that you're bringing. That will make it much easier to read. Is it possible to write an MSc thesis in collaboration with an organization, a PhD student, Ivado? So that's really three different questions. Um, so I remind you that compared to the project, which is a substantial but not nearly as substantial piece of work as the uh, thesis, uh, the thesis is more involved. It's often around 100 pages. Um, it's, it is, uh, in some cases, it can also be a research paper. So a lot of my students that did a thesis, we wrote a research paper together. They completed by adding some appendices and so on. So uh, is it possible to write it in collaboration with an organization? Yes, it is possible. So you may do a MyTax project or just work in an organization and write your thesis about it. Um, now the level of uh, novelty that you require for the thesis is a bit higher than for a supervised project so it will have to be a longer uh, work or to be um, some work in an organization that you uh, you keep developing after uh, to to make it a thesis um, also as the thesis goes to the library sometimes it's a bit harder with the organization because it will be published so uh, it requires extra care if there's uh, some sources of data or if there's some uh, trade secrets then you have to be careful of what you put in your thesis it is doable though and it is done uh, every once in a while uh, can you work in collaboration with a phd student that would in fact be unusual in our setting uh, writing with a PhD student and or postdocs and so on uh, would be quite common in a lab environment. So uh, in some sciences, there's a concept of lab where there's a professor, but in fact, he speaks mostly to the postdocs who speak a lot to the PhDs and so on. And it's a big team that work together on bigger projects. So uh, some, some professors in our department work in that mode. So uh, then it would be more likely that you could work in collaboration, uh, for example, with a PhD or postdoc, but it is not typical um, because uh, there's a lot of projects that are a bit more standalone as well. And uh, last part of that question is, uh, is it possible to write a thesis with Ivado? 
Um, so you may hear of IVADO, while well, maybe you've heard of them often. So it stands for Institut de Valorisation des Données. So data valorization doesn't quite sound right in English. It's really, it, it really means unlocking the data, uh, the value from the data. IVADO is uh, basically a research infrastructure and it has two heads. One of them is there's funding for fundamental research. The other one is they do have organizations, companies that are members of IVADO. And um, so you would not be writing with IVADO per se. Uh, you may get funding either from the research side or you may get a project and funding with a company that's a member of IVADO. Uh, now in terms of uh, professors, departments and so on, uh, all the professors in uh, our departments are um, part of IVADO. The department is a member, so the structure of IVADO is that organizations, departments, uh, uh, and research labs are members of IVADO, so it's not individual professors. And um, since the department is part of uh, IVADO, is a member of IVADO, then we are all uh, part of it as well. Is it possible to get funding from MyTax, FinML, or other organizations? So yes, this is possible. Um, the uh, the way that many of the so there there's really two tracks. One of them is if you have a really, really good um, academic file, you may be able to apply for grants on your own, just based on excellence. And uh, so there is good funds on this side, uh, but it's very competitive. So only a few people get it every year. Uh, on the other side, you do have sources of funds such as MyTax that are meant to uh, be a leverage for companies. So a company wants to have uh, welcome a student for a MyTax project. Um, they can go through that uh, program and they will need to pay only half of your stipend. So a, um, a MyTax project can be anywhere between 10 and 15,000 and the company will pay only half of that. The other half is coming from MyTax. There are funds that are uh, for research, for collaborative research. There are other sources of funding as well. So FinML is mentioned in the question. FinML can actually be done on top of MyTax as well. Um, that money comes from Evado, but through FinML, which is a group that is more about finance and machine learning. Um, there's, uh, I believe that in Hélène's presentation, uh, Marie-France Courtemange-Belle was mentioned. She is in charge of scholarships and so on, so she may send you emails every once in a while with opportunities. Um, in many cases, you'll need to go through your professor as well. So for my tax, for instance, the professor who's supervising you has to be uh, checking the, uh, well, at, at least validating, sometimes writing the application and uh, there's a bit of paperwork and so on. Uh, also, the money typically comes to the school and we can pay you a scholarship after that. So there, there are such opportunities, be aware of them. When should I start working on my thesis? Well, if you choose the thesis track, the answer is uh, you may start now, you may start at any point. So at some point, you'll have credits that you're uh, registering to. Uh, but you can start looking for your topic, for your professor, and work on it at um, any point of time, and earlier is better. So um, as soon as you have some time or plan to have some time, just go ahead, try to identify your uh, topic, try to identify um, what, uh, what your thesis will be, and start reading papers, and so on and so forth. Any additional advice about the redaction? A thesis is a more technical document than a supervised project. So um, let me just tell you a little story. When I wrote my master's thesis, I had worked for many weeks developing uh, basically formulas and trying to make proofs and so on. And I was feeling I had so much stuff. I was like, wow. This is, this is a lot of things. Then I sat with my professor. I was lucky that uh, it was his approach. And we started writing a research paper together. And after 10 minutes, I felt, oh boy, I don't have enough material for 10 pages because the way uh, the, the scientific writing is very compact. Uh, it is to the point. You don't repeat the same thing 10 times. You just make sure you say it clearly once. And so uh, many 
theses would uh, ideally uh, tend to that, to being more technical, more like a research paper. Would you like to say a few final words on the types of topics that one could choose for their projects and theses? So whether you're in business intelligence or in the data science and analytics uh, option, one central common point for both these programs is data. So uh, whatever topic you choose, there should be data somewhere, whether you analyze it, whether you think of uh, the type of infrastructure that you need for those data, some challenges around them, um, but data should be somewhere. Um, now, in terms of uh, choosing the topic itself, you should go with your personal preference, what you want to do later, what you want to do as a living in your job, and uh, take this opportunity to try to do something you like or you want to explore. Um, in terms of uh, different uh, topics, so in business intelligence, the program is large. So I'm from the um, decision science department, but uh, this, uh, the business intelligence program is joined with marketing and uh, IT as well. So we do have people doing projects that are very much IT or very much quantitative marketing, and that is perfect. That's excellent. So if that's your inclination, you should talk to these professors as well and um, see what you'd like to do. I even supervised projects myself that were a bit more IT that turned out that way. And that's good. They're, it's about data. It's part of the program. Um, looking more in the um, decision science department, uh, there is mostly three types of profiles for professors. So uh, Aurélie and myself, we were trained as statisticians. Uh, there is uh, a number of other professors, I think we're about 10 in that situation, that, has P that have PhDs in statistics. So we're really, uh, our uh, training is to be able to analyze data, think of the structure behind the data, think of models, and uh, we're best suited for uh, topics that are around that. We have a few colleagues who got their training in computer science and machine learning. So if you are doing something that's more um, funky in terms of analyzing text, analyzing pictures, images, uh, thinking of algorithms um, for machine learning, uh, then you should probably knock on their door or I guess send them an email now with COVID uh, first. Uh, and then there's also a part of the department who's uh, trained in operations research. And um, many of them, uh, including, for example, Gilles or Sylvain, they, they do data mining, they think of algorithms, Gilles does um, networks. Um, and so there, there is a data side to what they do. Uh, some of them will focus rather on really optimization algorithms. Uh, and uh, modeling, uh, doing a mathematical modeling of a situation, then finding an optimal solution. So uh, this is more part of the data science and analytics program, a bit less part of the uh, business intelligence program, uh, but that's another option as well. So uh, in terms of choosing your topic, go with your perf personal preference, uh, contact professors that seem to have the, good, uh, the right profile, if they don't, I mean, when I have a student who comes with a project that fits somebody else's profile better, I just tell them, well, you should talk to this person or that person and so on. This fall, the uh, social aspect of being a student is going to be very strange. Uh, in terms of uh, courses and so on, uh, I've had the chance already this summer to give courses through Zoom. It uh, worked better than I thought. So uh, I hope that's your experience as well. And uh, we'll, we're definitely working hard to uh, provide you with uh, high quality training, even if we don't get to uh, see each other in class. So uh, I wish everybody a good term and uh, see you around.